Right? <laughs> are you actually not ready that fast? Right. We are. Wow. You ready to go? <laughs> yes. All right, well, everybody, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. Uh, I know we did some brief introductions, but um, from our end, we have Tasha, she's on our client relations team. We have um, James and myself on the business development team, and then uh, Aaron and Alex from the staffing and recruiting team with us. Um, so do you all have any questions for us before you get started? Do you want to tell us a little bit? about yourselves or what you most hope to gain out of this presentation or discussion today? I'm Erica Osberg. I'm the Chief Compliance Officer at Best Buy. I've been here for about four years. I deal with all issues of compliance, contractual issues, work comp, risk, anything risk. I'm Chan. I'm the Director of Finance, so I'm working with all the department heads on their P&Ls, making sure everybody is working their budgets as they should be and analyzing opportunities for financial benefits. Okay. I'm Preston, I've been here six months now and I'm the uh, Director of Talent Acquisition and I'm in charge of making the program uh, bigger, better, and stronger so we can meet the needs of all of my stakeholders around the U.S. And hi, I'm Carr. Uh, I've been on here for three years, I'm a project manager and I also oversee the HRIS systems. So uh, my big concern obviously is how will you integrate, and is this the best technology considering all the other things on the market? And then also, what's implementation look like? Um, obviously, you don't want to be too disruptive in, in all our other current processes we've got going on right now. Perfect. Um, so, getting started, we'll go over our um, MSP and <coughs> BMS. So, James, we'll get started just telling you a little bit about us. Hi guys, my name is James. Um, I work in business development very closely with Ian. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little uh, background on Target CW, uh, go over our priorities and values, uh, give a rough breakdown um, of our offerings here at Target CW, and then we'll go into some more detail on our BMS and MSP services. Okay, so uh, just to let you know, we did uh, process 13,000 uh, W2 workers in 2018. Uh, last year we hit about 400 million in annual revenue, uh, which has been about a 40% increase year over year uh, since we started in 2010. Um, we are fully SSAE 16 compliant and we do undergo annual audits, obviously with the current climate, uh, that is very important to us. Uh, we are security cleared by the Department of Defense, um, so if you do have any positions uh, that require that kind of security clearance, we can help out with that. It might not be something that applies to you guys, but. Uh, just so you know, it is an option. Um, one of the things we pride ourselves on a lot is we have one of the most best places to work awards. Uh, we've been in 500, uh, in 5,000. Uh, we've won uh, best CEO of the year type thing. Um, our CEO actually currently has a 99% approval rating on Glassdoor that he is very proud of. And we actually very recently just hit five stars, a uh, perfect five star rating on Glassdoor with about 100 or so reviews. So feel free to check that out later when you guys have a chance. Um, as I mentioned, we, we really do care about our security and privacy, so we do have a fully dedicated site. So you can take a look, um, see that we are GDPR compliant, and that would be tcwprivacy.com. Okay, so take a look at that later when you have a chance. Um, so we do base all of our services out of San Diego, California, our headquarters. Um, we do have satellite offices in Seattle, San Francisco, Denver, and Hartford, Connecticut. I know we briefly touched on about 20 locations, uh, corporate locations for Best Buy that we were looking at across the US. Uh, so we do operate in, all 40, we operate in 47 states currently. Um, the other thing I think we talked about was uh, you had some plans maybe for late 2019, although we're not sure yet, about a couple of things coming up in uh, UK and Canada possibly, uh, some merger going on. So we do have entities in London and British Columbia and Canada as well. So that we can help out over there. Okay, so going into our, uh, into our priorities, you know, this is really important to us here. Uh, we do follow a kind of servant leadership model. Um, so the client yourselves would obviously be very important here um, as, as our organization cares. We go into uh, the candidate um, being second, second priority. Um, now we feel like if we take care of the client, candidate and agencies, uh, obviously all the agencies um, that we handle in the BMS, MSP, we want them to all have kind of a really unique experience so they all feel like they're part of the part of the team here at Target CW. And if we take care of the client candidate and agency, we feel like Target CW will be taken care of. 
Okay, so that, that obviously, if we take care of everything else, all the moving parts will come together. Target CW will take care of itself. So I'm going to hand it over to Alex in recruiting. He'll go over our values here at Target CW. Cool. Um, just touching a little bit on, on our values at Target CW. Number one on the list is uh, respect and transparency. Um, that goes along, you know, uh, nationwide with our clients as well as globally um, and in our internal partners. Um, on the second one, uh, memorable service, we are dedicated to providing memorable service um, just with consistent communication, um, you know, within, again, within our clients um, and uh, also with our customer service. Uh, we, do, uh, we do have a one hour response time um, for any questions that might arise, um, you know, along all lines, uh, we do have cascading phone lines. So if you know, if, if you call up uh, Target CW, you will um, speak to a live human, um, and account managers are tied to those lines. So they'll then answer any inquiries you might have. Um, we are consistently aligned, consistent, aligned with our uh, clients. Um, you know, we have the same goals, visions, um, putting us on the same page, same past, uh, path, driving our organization forward. Um, Staffing Nation is uh, beautiful because of the design. It's user-friendly, elegant, uh, intuitive. It can be adjusted and tailored to your needs. Um, and at the end of the day, it is simple. What is Staffing Nation? Um, Staffing Nation is our contingent work for, uh, workforce platform. Yeah, we'll jump more into that later too. Okay. So a brief overview of our services at Target CW. We do have four core services. Uh, global payrolling, we started out in 2010. Um, as I mentioned, we do now payroll across 47 states and around the globe in over 150 countries at the moment. Um, you know, uh, Alex briefly touched on our uh, knock, your socks, knock Your Socks Off customer service and our awesome benefits. So a little bit about that. Um, we obviously have some really great health benefits, but we also have some other tiny adjustments that maybe set ourselves apart from the competition. Um, so we have uh, pet adoption assistance, uh, we have pet insurance assistance, uh, we actually have a dollar for dollar match on charity donations as well, which our CEO is very proud of. Um, so there's some extra things there that you know you guys might consider really makes the workers feel part of a, uh, you know, as if they're not really a contingent worker at all. Uh, mm -hmm. So it can make a big difference to the workers. Um, now, we won't go too much into onboarding yet because we will discuss Staffing Nation onboarding for workers, but, uh, we, you can onboard, all the workers can onboard using their phone, tablet, uh, they just follow a link through their email, do everything in Staffing Nation. The average time to onboard is about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so it's pretty simple, everything's electronic, really easy, and they can get on the same day, no problem. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to follow them real time on the platform right where they're at in the onboarding process. Uh, so we'll dive into that in a second. Um, now we do obviously accept fully, fully uh, automated ACH funding uh, payments, and we include pre-screening if that's something you guys need uh, for the workers before their start dates. We do do it as quickly as possible so they can start as quickly as you guys want them to start. How long does your pre-screening generally take? Um, it usually takes a couple of days. Um, it depends on, on how quickly they get around to scheduling. Yeah, so we typically say about three to five days um, and we can set the pre-screening process up however you'd like. So if you're okay with candidates starting before they've completed their pre-screening, that's certainly something that we can do for you. Um, but it's totally up to what you guys work with. What specifically does automated ACH mean? Yeah, so the automated ACH is basically what's happening is when the worker goes in to fill out their onboarding paperwork, what they do is they put in all of their banking details into the system. So what that does is it automatically checks to see if that's good banking information, and if not, the system will send them asking them for additional uh, background information, so a copy of a voided check, something like that. So if we onboard someone before their pre-screening and they fail a background check, how does that? Yeah, so there's information um, in our offer letter regarding uh, pre-screening when you decide to use that with, with us. So in the event that they do fail their pre-screening, they know that their offer is contingent on a successful background check. So at that point, we would reach out to the worker, let them know that they failed their background, and we would end their engagement. So our next call service, uh, hybrid MSP VMS platform. So Obviously, we're going to dive into this. Ian's actually going to go over it in a couple of slides, go into some more details in the MSP VMS services. 
Um, I know this is one of the reasons we're here with you guys. Um, so just to give you a kind of brief overview, um, our BMS is a turnkey solution, meaning that it's ready to go. Uh, it's built into Staffing Nation, uh, which again, we'll go into. Um, so as soon as you're ready to go, it is flexible to grow of your needs. So if it's something that you didn't want to utilize straight away, it's just a flip of a switch away and it's already there, ready to go. Um, you will have full visibility into the workforce, meaning you'll have uh, key performance indicators, you'll be able to see budget by uh, worker, you'll be able to see placement by vendor, that kind of thing. You'll be able to have a full view of uh, everything going on on one platform on your dashboard, okay? Uh, obviously consolidated timekeeping and invoicing, uh, meaning you would be able to see all of that in one spot. It just standardizes the processes, make everything really easy uh, for the contingent workers. Um, now, the BMS capabilities I mentioned would be all through Staffing Nation, so it's all on that one platform, and uh, Ian will go through that in a second. Perfect. On top of offering um, global payrolling as well as uh, hybrid MSP and BMS, we do offer placement staffing. We do full service staffing. Um, full service staffing for temporary, temporary to hire, and also direct hire placements. Um, our staffing, excuse me, uh, we do have personalized recruiting model, like a full cycle recruiting um, for culturally aligned candidates, making sure that you have that perfect fit for the perfect company. Um, it is like a puzzle piece. You want to fit those uh, candidates with the placements uh, perfectly. Um, so our staffing department actually has verticals uh, within administrative, clerical, um, skill trades, uh, and also niche divisions such as like engineering, biomedical. Um, and we also have a recruiter who actually primarily focuses on transitioning military veterans, um, who is also a military veteran himself. Yeah, like Alex stated, I am uh, I run the, the veteran division at Truck ECW. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, combat veteran. I served both in Iraq and Afghanistan. So obviously my passion is to uh, you know, help the veterans getting out in, you know, with our local with our client base. Um, I see you guys staff, I have IT positions, warehouse positions, and a lot of the candidates I work with have that supply background, IT background. So I, you know, in the future, I think it'd be a solid fit for, for you, Preston, um, is your talent acquisition. So we also do 1099 audits. Um, we do vetting. Um, we do perform all vetting of independent contractors, uh, ensuring that they're either 1099 or W-2 employees. Uh, verifying that those employees do qualify for um, PTO benefits and maybe have a cap on their hours. Can I add to PTO? Excuse me? They can get PTO. Uh, but we'll just do that. Yeah, yeah, so typically at 1099s wouldn't, but in a W-2 relationship. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, okay. so, and of course that would only be if you guys decided you wanted to offer that to your contingent workers. I see. I think um, we were talking about veterans and the tax credit. Yes, we were. Can you guys speak to that, maybe you can help us with some of those kinds of things? Yeah. Veterans and tax credits? Or if you hire a veteran full-time, so you guys would find them. And then we would be able to get some sort of tax credit mm -hmm. is what we understood. Can you guys speak to that? Yeah, so I myself don't know too much about that, but we do partner with an agency called RSA, Vet, uh, RSA Staffing, <laughs> um, and they are a veteran-owned business. So I know there is a tax credit for that, but I would certainly be happy to look in, into more information regarding how exactly that works with hiring on a veteran. Person. Yeah, the, so you guys do have that government spend initiative, correct? Mm -hmm. To Okay, so that's something we could definitely help out with with RC staffing. And I also run, uh, being a veteran disabled uh, minority, that, uh, so that's something that I think will benefit you guys in the future. So, yeah, how, how does the tax credit work? What's that? The tax credit, how does that work? Can you, do, would you explain that further as far as the, like, with the with, uh, operational side, right? Yeah, so I'm not too involved in that from the operational side, but that's certainly something I would love to follow up yeah, with you guys after can, this meeting. I did also want to mention that we do work with a lot of nonprofits, uh, Wounded Warriors, as I'm a Wounded Warrior myself, uh, O3XX uh, organization, and the uh, Honor Foundation, who helps, uh, especially with Special Forces, uh, make their help with their transition into the civilian sector. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that it's geared and close to that. So how are you all? I know you have 50 uh, 1099s and independent contractors now. What does the vetting process for you all look like for those folks? Do you vet them or do, through your legal team? Or, through the legal team, yeah. And, and then you just pay them? We go through 
pure test depending on where they are located, mm -hmm. and then we decide whether they qualify as a real pen 99. What is your guys' vetting process? Uh, so basically we'll run them against the IRS and social security inspectors to determine an independent contractor compliance, and then in states like San Diego, or States like, <laughs> <laughs> in states like California, they have the ABC uh, ruling, which is relatively new, so mm -hmm. basically it makes it harder for companies to classify workers as 1099 as they lean more towards the W-2, um, so it's a three-prong test. So we'll run them against that as well, and um, then we basically tell our clients either, yes, this is a legitimate 1099 independent contractor, or um, if not, if it leans more towards W-2, we push them through the payroll link service. But what's nice on your end is, Currently, you're vetting them yourselves, so you're you're still holding significant liability that way. Um, if we do it, all, all of that's uh, mitigated from you. And is that an automated process, or do you have an actual human going through and doing vetting? Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, so we do have a wizard that automates part of it, um, but ultimately a human does review everything. So it's a little bit of both. Pretty simple, though. So... Really, the reason that we're here today and the reason that Target CW exists is that we want to make the utilization of your contingent workforce simple. So that being said, there's many global problems um, when it comes to MSP VMS programs. So instead of going through this list here, what I would like to do is maybe hear from each of you what a current um, issue is that you guys face uh, running your contingent workforce platform. The biggest one's obviously visibility is the one that we have for all of us. So um, that's for sure probably the largest one. Um, and for me, program governance right now, all that falls under my tutelage and cars has to do a bunch of the tech stuff, but it's just a lot of work that has to happen. And honestly, a lot of work that probably tends to be below my pay grade and waste of my time. Absolutely. So uh, program governance is a significant thing for us. And then a lot of the stuff you have up there is also important to us. Those are probably the two big ones for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say for me, it's, you know, obviously all the invoices and all the different staffing agencies and me trying to come up with working with these hiring managers, department heads, and trying to figure out how to make them more efficient um, on that spend. Um, as, you know, we're looking into margins more and more and budgets becoming more important to us. And the inconsistency between the vendors. I think that's a really difficult thing that we run into. Inconsistency in terms in of? In terms of contracts, in terms of usage, all of that. Perfect. Yeah. I think from a quality, you know, just as far as a performance standpoint, when we do get around seasonal times and we're really looking to ramp, it's just important for us to be able to engage people quickly and not have to kind of sort through a bunch of old data to figure out who we should be calling, what's the right agency on that. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, once we jump into Staffing Nation, you're going to be able to see really how this can mobilize your pro your uh, programs and projects that you have, as well as fix a lot of your guys' other problems. Okay. So I'll pass things over to Ian so he can dive into MSP and VMS and kind of what we mean by that. All right, so I'll go over basically what an MSP and a VMS is. I know that you're vaguely familiar. Um, interested in payrolling and staffing piece now, um, but some of the issues that you all have just outlined um, can be addressed via both of these services. So MSP is really the people portion and it's dedicating personnel um, to not only uh, implement and train and really um, we can step in on a more involved level and govern the program if that's something that is of interest to you. Um, we are experts, this is what we do, so uh, with our clientele we're experts in creating, managing, and uh, maintaining contingent workforce programs. Um, so we can identify different risks, ensure compliance for you all, whether that's you uh, transferring over the vetting of your 1099s to us and mitigating that liability from you all, um, along with several other things we can help out with. Um, consol consolidation of processes, so um, that kind of goes along with standardization. So really all the workers would have one way of onboarding um, you'd be able to track all of the workers in, in one tool, um, which we'll go over, which is Staffing Nation, um, and they're filling out the same timekeeping information. So uh, would, it would, um, Eric, it would remove a lot of the inconsistencies with vendors, and also Jan from the reporting side um, makes timekeeping and uh, 
you know, everything's on one invoice, so that would be really nice for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving on, so we'll step in, um, we'll cycle job order management. So basically all your different vendors would have your recs within one tool. We can help out with managing all of that um, from the beginning of the end to the, to the life cycle. Um, and then training and communication to all users. We wanna make sure that we're sending a consistent message to all hiring managers, all of the workers, really every party involved in the process. Um, and then multi-channel strategy is basically what you guys are getting workers from several different areas. So um, whether those are 1099s, whether those are staff people from an agency partner, whether they're a payroll worker, um, we're getting a lot of people from different, several different channels. Um, and then we, we do set up, so Preston, this will be helpful, we set up different KPIs and data for you to make better business decisions. So um, if, if that's something that you that you lack now is visibility into perhaps who's performing well for you or um, as a vendor or um, just different metrics like spend by department, time to onboard, uh, all that stuff you'll be able to see within the tool. And that really leads into Staffing Nation, which is our proprietary contingent workforce platform. So. Uh, it's developed, housed, um, and it's consistently being worked on here in the U.S. It, it is all GDPR compliant. Uh, and then what you're able to do in there, you'll have all of your agencies within the tool. Um, they're separated by sector, so you might have your um, you might have your technical and IT vendors. You might have your um, office and light industrial vendors, and then you might have other uh, roles and executive roles. And so you can segment those vendors by category um, within the tool, which is really nice. Um, and you can manage within the tool of your job orders um, from beginning to end. So whether that's um, creating a new order to send out to your agency partners, um, to reviewing resumes um, that your agencies have submitted to you, you can do all of that within the tool. Everything is automated. It's completely paperless. Um, and then you're, you're also able to have so you'll have all of your workers again, um, whether that's a payroll worker, whether it's a staff worker, a 1099, uh, internationally payroll worker, uh, SOW, you can have any worker that is basically not a full-time employee on your uh, internal HRIS. So you can have and house all of them within okay. Staffing Nation, which you would yeah. probably really like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and, and that makes things simple. So it's really simple, it's a scalable tool um, and then Preston, I know you mentioned APIs, or is that, that was, well, yeah, well, that's right. yeah, so um, we also are working on several different APIs. Um, we have one with Okta single sign-on, so that should be ready uh, to go in the next week, and we're also working on some integrations with Slack, uh, among a couple others, so yeah. if that's something you're interested in, we can help with that, too. Nice. And since we kind of touched on the KPIs, I noticed that you guys use fifteen vendors right now uh, is there are you measuring their key performance indicators right now and if so how there's no way to no. do it on this short answer now all right managers <laughs> just have maybe their favorites they've used to go through agencies perfect thank you for that so in this uh, slide we'll go over and start benefits as, as an organization so we are a turnkey fortune 500 contingent workforce uh, Solution. So what that means basically is we're a one-stop shop for all of your contingent workforce needs, uh, whether that's the payrolling piece, whether it's the staffing piece, whether it's the vetting of independent contractors, or um, whether it's this VMS MSP piece. We can do all of that for you. Um, we strive on providing clear and consistent communication, as I had mentioned, uh, across all user uh, platforms, so we won't beat that too much. Um, then integrated reporting, you'll see more of when we show you the dashboard and Staffing Nation, um, but dedicated resource consistency basically means if one of you all move on to a different role, um, you can count on the program existing and maintaining and um, you know fully functioning no matter what happens. So you have us as, as really that, that gasoline fueling your, your car, if you will. Um, so you, you can drive a Toyota, but we might <laughs> We're more like a Cadillac, we like to say. So all you really need is to get from point A to point B, but um, we provide a lot of things to make the program run really, really smooth. Uh, and then and from an engagement perspective, um, again, we'll standardize processes across the whole contingent workforce life cycle. 
um, in terms of, of project mobilization, say you needed to uh, bring on 200 more payroll workers by the end of the month, um, we would work with you to set a plan in place. We would tell you what we would need by what point in time, and we would work with you to make that happen uh, in a very efficient and timely manner that's simple for you. Um, for consistent feedback and improvement across all user spaces, um, take into account all of the stuff that our clients, employees, uh, workers that we have on with us tell us and we're always uh, improving and trying to make the experience the best it can be for everybody involved. Um, in terms of resources, um, this is on a more involved level, um, but if you are interested in program governance, which you touched on, we can really step in and um, basically take a lot off your plate by really governing the program, stepping in, renegotiating the agency contracts, um, setting up benchmarkings, different KPIs with the vendors, giving you more visibility, uh, and really just running the program. So, but that's from a more involved level. Um, clients and uh, contacts that we have love the fact that we offer some world-class benefits to our workers, so we really go out of the way to make sure that they're taken care of, that they feel welcomed, and that they have awesome benefits available to them. So James had touched on those earlier. Um, other than your standard ACA healthcare, we offer a lot of fun stuff like pet adoption, pet insurance, gym reimbursements, um, cell phone discounts, a lot of fun stuff. So that's something we pride ourselves on. Which one do you think sets you apart from your competitors? Uh, there's two main there's two main things really. Other than the customer service piece, you know, one hour response times for any client or employee inquiries. Being able to get a live person on the phone at any time is really huge. Uh, people love that. And other than that, it's the technology piece. So um, we'll show you some of the stuff within Staffing Nation, but um, we've done a really great job of streamlining all our technologies and being able to service all of our clients globally at a very high service level. There's two other ways that we really distinguish ourselves different than our competitors. So one, a lot of MSPs that you find, they're using an outsourced BMS. So they are not having the tool built in house like we do. Um, so that means that if you have any customizations or anything that you might need to change, you could be calling phone lines, trying to get those Get those things to happen and it's going to be slower moving um, the second thing is this is truly a hybrid model so we can put together things however you would like so before i jump into these bms msp models uh, the two things that i would like you to keep in mind is one each of them built on top of each other and secondly like i was saying what we're able to do is create a truly hybrid model that meets your guys's needs creating that constant alignment between the us and you so the first model is CW consolidation. Target CW isn't getting heavily involved yet in this phase, but what we are doing is we're helping all of your vendors get set up in our timekeeping system and we're really centralizing all of the timekeeping and the approvals, which is going to create one invoice for one, for one company for you, Jan, and it's also going to have consolidated reporting since we'll have all of that data for you. Yep. What if we still need to break it out by individual company or we also have that information? Yeah, we can absolutely do that for you. We have a lot of flexibility when it comes to invoicing okay. and how we can customize those. Okay. So you'll be given a team of target CW contacts. So that would go for a uh, account manager. So they'll be your day-to-day -day contacts. That will also come with me who will help with all of your setup in Ian as well. Now, model two is where Staffing Nation comes into play. So this is where we jump in and use Staffing Nation as a VMS that is going to really mobilize your job order deployment to your agencies. So you'll be able to better manage your intake of candidates. They're all gonna be in one place. You won't be searching through emails, trying to figure out what you did with that resume. Everything is one place. Your hiring managers can comment. You can see everything there. We'll also have an MSP come into play in this model. So they'll help with vetting and scheduling your candidates. So anyone you wanna interview, you'll be able to do that through the system and they'll help get that going. With this model, this is gonna be huge for you guys is you'll have access to your agency KPIs. So while you're using 15 vendors right now, that might not be the ideal number for your team, but being able to actually look at that metrics is gonna help you. And lastly, there's a centralized agency portal through Staffing Nation. 
So all of your agencies will have all of their agreements, COIs, any applicable documents housed in one place. Lastly, we have phase three, which is the vendor management model, which is really when we come in and we have a fully governed program. So Erica, I know you were saying that there's a lot of inconsistencies between all of your vendors. What we would be able to do is work on a contract that they can't redline. So everyone is going to agree to the same terms. You won't have those same inconsistencies. With that, we can also govern all of your rates and your conversion terms. So an example that I love to give is one of our client companies who we worked with when we first went in and governed their rates, we were actually able to save them $1.6 million in their first year. Explain how that worked. Yeah, so essentially what happened is we came in and a lot of times you'll have different rates for different agencies and there's mm -hmm. usually not a lot of transparency. So a lot of staffing agencies, as you may know, will work off of bill rates while we work off of markups. So you're always going to know exactly what the markup is that you're paying and what the pay rate of the worker is getting and what the bill rate is. So we came in, we made a more aggressive rate that we could enforce across the board. And then we also were able to cut down the conversion terms to only four weeks. So after four weeks, they could convert them without any fees. Wow, great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. This model also reduces non-essential agency interaction. So instead of you having to manage 15 vendors, your MSP is gonna take care of all of that for you. Your MSP is also gonna be looking at, looking at your KPIs and making business recommendations based on those. And lastly, just like I was saying with the contracts, we'll come in and we can provide that consistent compliance across of all of your agencies. Looking at these phases, are there any that stick out to you that you guys think would be a good fit? To me, three is the one that we would ultimately want to do. But I think the, uh, one of the big challenges is, again, like who does everything? Mm -hmm. And how do you decide who does what duties? And then how do we deploy this to 20 locations across the US and have each person use it or one person use it and all that. Can you speak to some of those use cases that you might have? Yeah, absolutely. So something that's built into the system is we have an order approval process. So depending on how many tiers of approvals that you guys need to have, we can put that in place. So we can hold webinars, we can hold, uh, we can create uh, user guides, and what we can do is launch this out to all of your branches, but instead of all of your hiring managers going rogue and entering things into the system, not only will this have to be approved by uh, your VMS manager, but you could put you or finance or whoever needs to be involved in that process as well. So as opposed for, to you having to do everything yourself, you'll just have to look it over and make sure that you approve. And would that each hiring manager go in there or would, you, would the MSP person do all that for us? So your MSP will be managing what they're doing and really we can, we can set it up however you want. Given the size that you guys have and able to really mobilize your program, I would probably recommend that your hiring managers have restricted access to the system so we can set it up to where they only have access to their department so they can't be onboarding things in different departments or different locations. We can also make it location specific. And that really is going to be able to give your team more access to move, but while having your MSP keep an eye on it and make sure things are running smoothly. What would a company use phase two like phase three? What, what's the advantage of going with phase two or model three? So like, for example, uh, you may need help at the beginning. I know that um, Preston's interested in running his own program, but you might not have the manpower to do it at the beginning. Um, so phase three would really help out I could even see you all starting in a phase more of a phase three and then moving on to a phase two where we're more uh, hands off and okay. you're just doing it on your own. And is there a different in cost for the different There phases? are, they, they go up typically. Mm -hmm. Like it might be like 1%, 2%, 3% and it's all uh, supplier funded. Okay. So it's a model that we work off of. Okay. So one of the uh, companies that we spoke with they actually charge an MSP on their payrolling business. Yep, we can do that as well. Um, we can just increase the payrolling rate to cover the MSP fee, is that what you're referring to? Well, they also charge an MSP fee on all invoices, but even theirs. We found that to be kind of unorthodox. Can you speak to that? 
Yeah, so the I'm not sure I'm following you clearly. So, so they, 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 they increase the payrolling fee to cover the MSP. Yeah, and so they charge one percent the on the payrolling, one percent on all the agencies. Everybody has a percent markup, but even themselves. Interesting. Yeah, so they're charging a percent as well. Yeah, I don't believe that we do that. So, um, but what we would do is, is typically just one percent. I'd have to double check to be honest with you. One to one to two percent. Okay. Does that answer you guys' questions? When you say one to two percent, you mean on phase two or? Well, so it's either supplier funded or, yeah, depending on what the phase is, right? Um, but the suppliers pay for it. So we wouldn't, if we're the MSP, we wouldn't be increasing our own rates as okay. well. Um, then this piece, this is basically, this goes over the three phases essentially, so um, that Tasha just covered. So um, phase one is consolidation, getting every uh, worker on the same timekeeping tool, having one invoice for all of the workers, and then you would move on to um, phase two, which is the job order management, and then on to phase three, which is more of the agency management and the governance piece. Um, and then you have the MSP, which is where we would step in with a dedicated person to really help govern and run the program. Um, but nonetheless, regardless, uh, even if you never use a VMS or MSP, you're still gonna be using Staffing Nation. Uh, if you use us for payrolling, all of the workers would onboard through there. Um, and it's truly as easy as a flip of a switch to turn on the VMS uh, capabilities. You'll also find most VMS systems, I, don't, I actually can't even think of a single one, does the onboarding through the actual system. So that's another way that we differentiate ourselves as well. We well, yeah, only like stated before, uh, you know, Staffing Nation is our proprietary software uh, system that it, uh, allows you to manage your global contingent population. And, you know, one of the benefits I think are the uh, is an ability that you're able to uh, uh, just set, everything will be centralized for you guys. So every everything's tailored to you guys. And you'll be assigned. Um, Target CW will, will uh, assign you guys um, a program manager. To, to basically run it, you know, um, on your guys' end, yeah, is like with all the advantages. Um, you know, here are some of the bullet points. Is there anything that, that you guys have any questions that you think will benefit your your corporation in the future, or any concerns? Any like I know we went a lot of we went over a lot of highlights. Are there any concerns that you guys have? Well, when you say benchmarks, can you guys tell me what benchmarks means to you? When you're say you you're your team will create benchmarks. What is that? Yeah, so benchmarks could mean a couple of different things, but really we're creating benchmarks for your vendors. So for example, we want them to have a 75% uh, not approval, but um, participation rate. So it would be creating those types of things to create uh, vendor scorecards so that at the end of a trimester or a quarter what we could do is review those see if we want to keep using those vendors and those types of things we're also able to create benchmarks with your team so if you know that we want to work to reduce your rate or reduce um, your conversion terms to be able to save money we can work on those types of benchmarks too so you benchmark all those conversions, whether it's conversions or rates or whatever it is, you benchmark that against your current customers, or where do you set 